I want to give you a little background on William and people with autism. Um, many times, especially at the, the autism is a spectrum, okay? It can go from nonverbal, can't help themselves and daily activities to people like ourselves. I'm more than sure there's someone in here that thinks they're normal, <laughs> but you have autism, okay? That's just how wide that spectrum is, okay? So William um, is 22 now. He was born in the year 2000. Um, William, to me, seemed as though he was, when he was born, as my other children. I have three older children than William and one younger. Raylan's 20, William's 22, Jaquel is 32, um, Kashidi 34, and my son Kashif is 37. So I had a little experience with children before having William, okay? And he seemed just fine. Around the age, um, not even one, William was doing things that I saw 18 month olds do. But then at the same time, he was doing things that I saw six month old do. So it was so varied, it was like, hmm, you know? Um, as he aged and would do things, even his kindergarten and first grade teacher was like, you know, on some areas William is, excels and other areas he's behind. It was weird, just not what you would expect to see. Um, by the time William was um, halfway through elementary, we noticed William didn't have friends, any. William wasn't interested in children. When you would question William about other children, he'd be like, hmm, those kids are bad. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want to play with kids. We put him in t-ball and different sports. William wasn't interested. T-ball, William would sit out in the field, and that's the only place they could put him, <laughs> and do flips and cartwheels and chase caterpillars. Um, so the ball would roll completely by William. He was not interested. Um, William was interested in adult things like cooking, baking. Um, he didn't want sports. He wasn't interested too much in cartoons. He would play with Raylan, his younger sister. He would talk to the older um, siblings, but he really wasn't interested in engaging with others, which was odd to me. So I questioned the pediatricians, I questioned his teachers, and people would say, oh, he's just an introvert. Oh, he's just quiet. Oh, he just likes to be alone. No, that was not the answer. I questioned, was William autistic? Because I could see the signs. I'm a dental hygienist and a realtor, so I could see things when kids came into the dental office that was in common with William, but I still never got the answer. This went on from the time William was six till he was 16. You wanna know how I found out William was autistic? William was, um, we moved around a lot. During the recession, the last recession, we were pretty much homeless. I went from Charlotte back to my father's house in Florida and we lived there for four years. We really liked North Carolina, so when I got it together and you know the economy changed a bit, I came back to Charlotte. Charlotte is a great city to live in. So first week of William's 11th grade year, they called and asked for William's IEP. An IEP is an individual education plan for a student with disabilities. William doesn't have an IEP. Well, he should have one from Florida. I'm like, where are you getting that from? Because William doesn't have an IEP. They said, well, the Spanish teacher says she needs it for William's autism. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped everything I was doing, and I went up to the school. And after school, I had William call to the office. William, take me to that Spanish teacher. Go to the Spanish teacher. Spanish teacher's like, oh, he's autistic. I'm like, no, it's not because I asked the pediatrician several. I've talked, spoken to people in the past. They say, well, he's not autistic. She says, I've worked with autistic people for the past 20 years. William is autistic. She said that this was her first year teaching. She gave me the information that I needed. I took William to um, UNC Charlotte. It's a program called Teach, 
and it's really a study with UNC about people with autism. So two visits later, William's diagnosed with autism. Now y'all know that was God, right? Yes. Y'all know that, right? Okay, so then from there, we got William his IEP, which he needed. William would sit in the back of the class and not talk, bother anyone. If they put him with a group project, William wait until everyone's done and then puts his input in. <laughs> <laughs> so William needed the IEP. He needed more study time because he had been moved back a year during middle school because he just wasn't participating, doing his work. I couldn't motivate him. It was, it was a lot, especially when you don't know how, especially when you don't have anyone telling you anything, basically. They just assume he's just not doing it. Well, there was a reason why he was not doing it, you know? And if I had had that information, I could have worked with it more and been basically better at it. But I didn't know. So we went from there. William graduated from high school, and then that was it. There, being diagnosed late with any condition, especially in school systems, puts you behind. They, they will assume that, oh, he's fine, he can do it, he can go get a job, and, and that's it. But that's not that simple. Goodwill wouldn't even hire William because there was too much going on in their stores that they said that William would be too overwhelmed and they wouldn't even hire him. We went to Publix, we went to vocational rehab, who's supposed to help with people like William, but they said that they couldn't work with William. Okay, so William sat home from the time he graduated from high school, um, 2019, June, until January this year. And then there was flying lions. <laughs> this is how good God is. Flying lions had probably had no clue that William could bake. William started cooking when he was seven. He would be at the stove, could barely look over it, and ask me, could he do something? Okay. Imagine your eight-year-old asking you, especially a boy, for cookbooks for Christmas and his birthday. That's what William would want. We couldn't give William, one year we tried to give William some sports stuff. He was like, he said, how many times I got to tell you I don't like sports? <laughs> <laughs> so he took his cookbooks and went upstairs. Um, William, <laughs> William can bake, and William did not get this from me. Okay, I'm a Betty Crocker fan. William baked from scratch. I didn't even know, like some of the things William do, I'm like, how did you know to do that? But, but that's autism. Like people with autism know things they shouldn't know for some reason, but things they should, you have to pull them into that, you know? So William has scales. I don't know, you're supposed to weigh your food. <laughs> He has the measuring cups. He has, I mean, he asked for mixer, a mixer one year for cooking. Um, anything like aprons, stuff like that, that's what William likes, you know. But try to give him anything else, no, he doesn't want it. If it's not related to baking or cooking, he's not interested. The Flying Lions program was a gift from God because we had worked and worked to try to find William some type of outlet because he doesn't go anywhere. William doesn't like amusement parks. Anything that a usual 22-year-old would be interested in, it's not there. William's mentality really is around 12. So even girls, William's never been on a date. Your high schoolers graduate their last year, they're all into the senior programs and the senior um, homecoming, prom, senior day, all of that. We participated in none of that. You know, getting him to his graduation, it was more of us wanting it than William. William could have just got his diploma in the mail and he would have been okay. You know, um, staying after, you know how you take pictures with your friends and family after the graduation? William wasn't interested in any of that. You know, the only thing William was interested in, can we go get something to eat? That's it. So it can be a, quite a journey um, with people with disabilities and people presume they're normal, okay? Um, I don't say anything is wrong. One of my biggest pet peeves is people say, oh, well, what's wrong with him? Nothing's wrong with anyone. People are just different, okay? The person you're sitting next to is different from you. 
The person you're sitting across from is different from you. The person that sit, sleeps next to you is different from you. So when you see people with disabilities, you know, try to take out that word, oh, what's wrong with them? Nothing's wrong with them. They're just different, okay? But William's difference is his mentality and social skills is not up to his age, okay, um, on some levels. But that, that baking and flying lines was a gift from God, I swear. It takes me 45 minutes to drive here and 45 minutes to go home in Charlotte traffic. And I am more than happy that my son has a program to come to that I will bring him here. Um, you can see how he's changed. He's a little bit friendlier. He's not as recluse. He has friends, yeah. They're older ladies. <laughs> 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 but those are William's friends. <laughs> he looks forward to coming. Um, it's at a pace that he can handle because we don't want him getting overwhelmed. When William gets overwhelmed, he starts moving and flapping his arm and pacing. So we don't want that, okay? But their pace is so good and they're so gentle and they're so kind and everything just works and meshes together to it's the benefit for William, you know? Um, I'm sure that, you know, they benefit from William's baking and I'm more than sure they were surprised that William can bake. <laughs> William, William bakes a mean pound cake. Uh, <laughs> he, can, he can really bake. And I said, William, how did they do? And he was like, I said, yeah, you got them, don't you? <laughs> so the benefits of Flying Line is much needed. Because let me tell you guys this. This, I don't want to talk about our government, because I do live in America, but it's messed up. <laughs> why, <laughs> why do you have to be on Medicaid for most of these programs? If you don't qualify for Medicaid, they don't want you. Even if you say, okay, well, I'll pay. Oh, we're not set up for payment. Well, how do people who don't qualify for Medicaid get in these programs? Know what they tell you? Oh, well, you have to apply here for SSI, which is Social Security Disabilities, in order to get the Medicaid which will also give you food stamps. Well, I just need the Medicaid. I don't, you know, it, it didn't make sense. So this program, Flying Lions, doesn't require any Medicaid, okay? So a lot of programs we couldn't even get in because they only want people who are Medicaid. Even if the parents or whoever can pay, they don't want it. So that's a waste to me. Because if you get on SSI, that's $800 a month the government will give you, okay? Then you have the Medicaid. Then they give you another 300 in food stamps. So couldn't you have just avoided not giving me the 300 and the 800 and just gave me the Medicaid so he can get in the programs? It makes no sense. So you gave me a whole another $1,100 when all I wanted was the Medicaid. <laughs> it makes no sense. So flying line is much needed, especially for people at Williams' level of spectrum because they don't need the Medicaid, they're, um, they're organized, they're not overwhelming, they actually are serving a purpose because they're teaching William how to work in an environment that he loves. And I'm sure there are other participants that would love to join this program. It should be more programs like Flying Arts, really, because to have to be on Medicaid or you can't do this or you can't do that, it's, it's, it's a hot mess. So um, I want to say thank you, Miss Sue and Miss Linda. You know, we always stay in contact, and I want to thank you for being so kind and gentle to William. Um, I want to thank the congregation for having such a ministry to help people with disabilities. And um, that's all I have to say. Thank you.